So again, disclosure is that, of course, David and the IHDA charity are funding me to do this work, uh, charitable work around the world, and get the message out on the calcium scan and on the solutions to heart disease. Uh, there's no financial ties to the heart scanning industry. That's important to note. This is all philanthropy. Right? There's no profit involvement whatsoever. Another disclosure of sorts is I published in March in the US and worldwide a book with my co-author, Dr. Jeffrey Gerber uh, from Denver, and it includes everything you need to know about health, identifying issues and resolving them. Uh, so it is a disclosure though, I have a book out. Sometimes we get criticized for that, would you believe? So first part, you don't measure it, it don't get fixed. And this is a phrase we have in engineering, and it's really crucial that you measure the right measurements to identify any problem. If you're measuring the wrong things or things that do not directly relate to the cause of the issue, you can get misled. So measuring is very important. And I'm going to introduce the Pareto principle, which is used in engineering all the time. And you may have heard of, of it as the 80-20 rule. So 20% of the efforts you put into something often deliver 80% of the results. And likewise, you can spend 80% of your efforts and get very little back. So the Pareto principle is to always focus on the top things that give the biggest bang for the book. And you'll be vastly more efficient if you do that, right? It sounds obvious in ways, but it's, it's a really important principle. And another thing for part two to think of it is, 20% of the root causes for an illness or a condition or a problem, 20% of those many causes that it could be will account for 80% of the resolution. So there may be 10 or 15 things driving uh, an issue, but two or three of them will give you 80% of your results if you focus. So you need to focus on the right interventions, and that's really important. So I'm going to tell David's story here briefly. Uh, he's owner and uh, CEO of H&K International, a six to seven hundred million dollar business. And a few years ago, he was 52, slim and fit, running four times a week, uh, really focused on health, six children, very health focused. And his doc said he was bulletproof. So that was really reassuring, of course, if you're slim, fit and you go running and your docs think you're great. Loads of executive medicals, all the bloods were good, nothing was raised, treadmill, stress tests, ECGs, pretty advanced tests uh, for, in the system, and fit as 10% for his age, passed everything, flying colors, essentially. But now we have a Pareto moment, and that is because he happened to get a calcium scan of the heart, a five minute scan, costs $100 in the States, maybe 200 euro here. And this is a Pareto type thing because it gives so much data for a few minutes of your time and a, a tiny amount of money that it's giving a huge bang for the buck. In David's case, it showed that he had a score of 906 and he was actually the worst 1% for his age for heart disease. A huge chance of a heart attack in the coming 10 years. CAC supersedes all tests. And that's really important to know. He found out with a subsequent angio, there were three majorly blocked arteries, and he found out that he didn't need surgery. As an asymptomatic heart patient with no symptoms, surgery does not really help in most cases. What you need are some meds and primarily a lifestyle intervention, changing your nutritional environment and other elements. And he took six months off his business to study this whole sphere and get fully knowledgeable in it. He found out a few weeks later he was diabetic, undiagnosed, one of millions, probably hundreds of millions of people around the world who have essential diabetes but never get diagnosed. Okay? And that would have been driving the majority of the heart disease problem. And he found out that heart disease is resolvable. And this was actually before I began to research this fear because it was back in 12. It is resolvable and you can stop the progression of the disease and bring your risk right down to someone who never had much disease in the first place. And that's crucial. If you can't intervene and stop the disease, there's not much point knowing about it. Nutrition being the primary root cause, though meds have a place too. Resolved his disease process, his calcification over the last five or six years is only going up a few percent a year. And I'll explain how that means his risk is now extremely low versus the huge risk I showed you at the start. Founded IHDA, Irish Heart Disease Awareness, all philanthropy, charitable, funded the Widowmaker movie for $2 million, and we'll send you a link afterwards so you can watch this uh, fascinating movie. And 
it's something you really got to do. So atherosclerosis and calcification, I'm going to give a simplified explanation of what it really is. Heart disease is the biggest killer in the world. Most heart attacks are due to atherosclerosis, the inflammatory disease of your arterial wall, right, which damages the wall. And I'm going to show you this drawing here. On our left, we have someone young and fit and hasn't had time to have any arterial disease build up. And you can see the inside wall of the artery is healthy. They're normal. No problem. Generally speaking, people who approach middle age, you know, there's an office worker there, maybe in his mid-40s, there's the beginnings of arterial disease. Now, it's important to say that there'll be some people in their mid-40s or even 50s with almost no disease. And there'll be some people who are just about to have a heart attack. So it varies hugely between people. It depends on what they ate during their life, what they did, some genetics. But either way, what happens is inflammation builds up in the wall. You get little pockets that are kind of like pus in a pocket of inflammation, like an infection. And white blood cells and red blood cells and immune system components come in and try and deal with this pseudo-infection. So that's what happens kind of earlier on. With time, and I'm showing time going on here, for the average person who's developing this disease, these pockets, the body will bring in calcium in a bone matrix formation. So the body will bring in calcium and form bony structures around these pockets in order to actually stabilize them. So the calcium in, you see in the scan is actually your body's attempt to fix this problem. And it's, it's fascinating and it's quite effective. So you've got this calcium begins to appear. But again, this is pretty early on in the process. A little while longer, and you may have many of these boils or pustules around your arterial system. You, some people have lots of them. But at some stage in the process, you get significant calcium built up to stabilize this problem. And you'll get calcified plaque. These are called plaques. And then you're going to show up on the scanner with calcium all around your arteries, right? wherever this is happening. So that's that point in time. More time, they can become vulnerable. If you keep pushing the disease process that this is, atherosclerosis, these will get worse and the calcium will have a hard time stabilizing. So you'll end up with vulnerable plaque where they're in danger of rupturing. Eventually, ruptures will occur. Some may be asymptomatic. You'll get small ruptures. You won't notice them. Uh, you'll get later on thrombus or clotting occurs. Again, it may be asymptomatic. And you can also, when you're out at this stage of advanced disease, you can have soft plaques with no calcium, which cause a lot of the ruptures. But it's the calcium presence that betrays the presence of disease throughout your body. That's why it's such a key indicator. And very late in the process is where you actually get a myocardial infarction or a heart attack. And this is where you go down. And a huge proportion of people die from their first heart attack. So they never get a second chance. But you'll notice it's out here. So one could ask, well, what if this person way back here, maybe 10 or 15 years earlier, got a scan and saw that they had calcified plaque and advanced disease? Could they do something about it to change their future? Well, they could. They could intervene in here and put in fixes to stop this progression of this disease. And you see I've put in here, they can stabilize and basically stay the same pretty much or close to the same. And I'm just going to go back once. Rather than going down this path, actually get things to stabilize and stop progressing. And then the risk plummets because you have stable plaque, essentially. So I'll talk about the test now. Here is our two scans from a calcium scanner. On the left, you can see there's no white in this area. That's your heart, cross section through your torso. And the guy on the right here has maybe a five or 600 score. And you can see the bright white calcium standing out in the scan, right? Like I showed you in the last diagram. That's all down there in his arteries inside his heart. This person has an extremely low risk. It's actually my co-author, Dr. Gerber, at 56, has a zero. And this person has very high risk. And I'll indicate how high now. 
First, I'll just give credit to the people in the 70s, mostly professors, and Professor Doug Boyd particularly, who invented this high-speed scanning technology. So the technology has been around for 40 years. The tra tragedy is that it's not being used, and even most doctors don't know about it, for reasons explained in The Widowmaker. So here's a study, very recent, and it'll show you that a zero score in middle age, or a one to a hundred, which is pretty low risk. You can see 1.4% expected events or heart attacks seen over the following 10 years, which is pretty good. A zero doesn't mean immunity from heart attacks, it means you're a very low risk. But you could still get an electrical problem giving you a heart attack. You could still have advancing diabetes that's driving the process so fast you actually have a problem before you get calcification. But generally it's a very low rate if you have no calcium. Triple the rate with 1 to 100. 15 times the rate when you get up to higher scores. Right, So you can see the massive predictive power of this. And what do people think up here at the very high scores? Well, you actually get up to 37% chance of a heart attack versus 1.4 for a low score. So you can see that multiplier is like a 20 times multiplier of risk. Now, blood pressure being high or cholesterol being high or things like this, risk factors, they are 1.5 or 2x the risk if they're high. But this, this is a massive risk increase because it sees the disease process itself. And again, tens, hundreds of studies, hundreds of thousands of people, always the same answer, calcification essentially never fails. And just to highlight, this is a Pareto style test. Five minutes and you get this incredible information. Looking at all cause mortality, right? Everyone's interested in whether they're gonna die or not and when, uh, but it might be due to other things besides heart attack. Here, 25,000 patients were followed for 12 years. And we see that the people with a low score at the start, very low, 0.6% or 1 in 200 were dead after 12 years. With a slightly higher score, 11 to 100, 2.2%, three times as many, were dead. This is a big deal. What do people think if you get up to the 100 to 400 score? And higher scores? Well, it keeps on going, not too unexpected. If you're driving calcification, you are driving inflammatory processes in your body that will drive up your risk for most diseases, okay? Now, do people think uh, there might be mathematicians in the audience who can guess approximately what happens when you're a very high score? If you follow that little series, what do we think? Take a guess. You'd think 10, 11, but it's actually exponential because very high scores indicate severe problems and it was actually 23% were not alive at the end of 12 years. So that's kind of the kicker. This is Pareto brought to extremes, okay? And there's this picture again. Now, risk factors. I mentioned risk factors, and everyone's running around worried about the risk factors, and risk factors have an importance, and you gotta watch them. Cholesterol, blood pressure, all these things. Blood glucose, not enough people are looking at that. But here in this study, there were over 50,000 people. And you can see from zero risk factors, one, two, or three or more risk factors, there's the mortality that occurred. And sure enough, with more risk factors, you get a higher mortality. Now, it's not incredibly impressive to an engineer because three or more risk factors is only twice the mortality of zero. That's kind of like, okay, but it's a bit, um, bit ambiguous, not very powerful. But what if they scanned all these 50,000 people and got their calcium score? Would you expect to see more powerful results? Well, I guess after what I showed you, you would. Well, here's what happens. Whether you have zero risk factors, one, two, or three or more, the calcification is a massive multiplier of risk. So this was a very fair study that had both calcification and all the risk factors in it. And calcification blows away the risk factors because it sees the disease. It's not indirectly guessing, looking through a murky window of blood measures at whether you might have the disease or might not, okay? So again, a key point, Pareto. So smoking versus CAC score, and I like this study, but it's quite controversial. So this study, they tracked people for five years, and you can see here that non-smokers with a low score 
1% died by the end of it. And that's pretty good for middle-aged people. 1% died, you know, over, over a five-year period. The smokers, who had a low score in calcium, they had 2% and a little bit, which is the double your risk of death from smoking. You know, two to three times your risk of death. So no one would smoke, right, if they were smart. You couldn't because you're doubling your risk of death. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. However, what about the non-smokers who had a high score in calcium scan? Are they going to be worse than the smokers who had a low score? Well, they were. A lot worse. Around 6.5 times more likely for a non-smoker with a high score to be dead than a smoker with a low score. And this is not to take away from how bad smoking is. This is to illustrate how important calcium scan results are, right? Because if you were secretly smoking and didn't know about it, you'd be pretty angry at your increase in risk and you'd want to intervene and stop smoking. Of course you would. But what about not knowing your score and you're heading for this kind of risk and no one tells you? And you could equally intervene and fix this problem. But most people don't get the chance. Last study, I think, is the progression. And this is important because you can ask, and I've referred to it a couple of times already, if you find out you have a high score, can you do something about it? And this shows the importance of stopping progression. In this study, people who had a low increase per year in calcification, like David basically has had for six years, less than 15% increase per year. After six years, high scoring people with very high scores at the start, there was 3% who had heart attacks. That's not bad at all actually, because you had a huge score, but because it didn't progress much, there were only a few percent of heart attacks. Now what if we look at the people where the yearly CAC score was increasing, because they scanned these people repeatedly over the years. More than 15% increase per year, which happens if you don't intervene and do the right things. Four years pass by and the modeling shows that that's the heart attack outcome. In this study, it was 17 times higher rate of heart attacks for people who had a rapid increase in calcium per year, which makes absolute sense because if you're driving the disease process fast, you are heading for the wall a lot faster. And on average, it's six to eight times more risk to have a higher annual increase. So these are dreadful odds. So you don't want to let that happen. A recent Irish example, and we'll go to a relatively young guy. We have many of these people. This is just tip of the iceberg. And this guy is Noel, and he was worried about his health because he had a family history. I won't read through it there, but he was concerned because he has three kids, and you know he, he didn't want to get caught out. You know, wants to stay alive. So he went to the doctor, and he was quite thorough with the doctor. Wanted all the tests. His cholesterol was good. Other bloods were good. No worries, the doc said. And specifically, in spite of your family history, you're good. You're safe. Okay, doc. Thank you. But he was reading stuff and probably reading some of my stuff and he insisted on going to a cardio and getting deeper testing and all they'd give him was stress tests and echocardiogram which isn't much use actually to be quite honest uh, but they wouldn't give him a calcium score and they told him the cardio all good no worries it's all good good to go but he wouldn't take no for an answer so he went on and insisted i want this calcium scan that ivor's talking about and he got one Cardio gave him one. What happened? 25. At his age, that's diffuse calcification throughout his coronary tree. That is a serious level of disease. It's not all good and it's not no worries. And he had to push all the way through that process in our medical system to force his way through to find this out. And the cardiologist's uh, person contacted him immediately to get him to come in for medication. So it was all different now. But note that he had to push his way through. So this ain't easy in the way the system is. You've got to push your way through. His Framingham risk based on risk factors that the doctors use for risk estimation was around 5% from this little lot up here. But MISA, which uses calcification data, showed he was over 30% risk of a heart attack in the following 10 years. So he was six times worse off than they said. And that's because calcification tells you your actual extent of disease. It's not a guess. 
And afterwards, the happy side of the story is, he was very angry, obviously, but he said, I'm all over it, Ivor. I'm all over it. And he is. He is doing all the things that will stabilize this disease and change his future and not have to go down like his relations, right? So Noel actually is here. He gets the scan and he realizes, my God, I've got extensive disease throughout my vessels, okay? And he doesn't want to go out and end up like this, so he doesn't want all this to happen. He wants to do this to stop the progression. And he can check back in a couple of years that the calcium is not increasing, right? That's what anyone would do. Any engineer, accountant, anyone who understood this would do that. It's a no-brainer. It's your life. No one's going to do it for you, right? And Noel had access to the fixes because they were explained to him. And they're not the orthodox fixes we think of, like low-fat diets and you know, a little bit of exercise. They're a little more extensive than that, and I'll go through them in part two. 